Let's have a look at statistical analysis. So we've obviously looked at some random errors and all different type of errors that we can experience. But random errors can affect any set of readings that we might come across. And therefore we use statistical analysis to analyze a set of readings. Um, we can estimate the true value being measured. Uh, we can also use to see uh, show how much confidence is in place in an estimate and it allows for bad data to be discarded. And this bad data could obviously be random errors that we come across. So we often do these analysis by using graphs. And there's two graphs that you will probably come across. Um, the first one is a histogram graph which is for discrete readings. So in this specific chart you will see that different, well, a certain length was measured using a specific um, measuring instrument and um, let's say this is all in meters so we can put it over there so, well, in meters it would be a bit difficult because I mean it's quite a, a big difference over there but let's say this was millimeters it would make more sense so you measuring for example a thickness of a book or so and you're using a vernier for that okay so if you have a look at this it might have been a few number of readings that were performed and um, 2.7 millimeters was measured for five different times in the set of readings that were obtained. And this needs to be a 2.78 over there. And for example, 2.9 was measured 12 times um, with this set of, of readings. And you'll realize over here that there seems to be more 2.85 millimeter readings taken compared to the others. And if you had to plot all the, the centers of each of these points together, such as that, you'll notice that you'll be able to create what's called a continuous graph, which would appear something like that. Now, there could have been errors in our measurements and so, so this is, um, you know, it is possible that that could be seen over here. Um, so we will ignore it for this example. But yeah, as you will see over here in this continuous graph, there seems to be a peak that's happening over there. And the same thing happens with these um, readings that we obtained over here. There's a peak over here. And you could probably in a very um, crude way say well the possibility that this book is a thickness of 2.85 millimeters or even 2.9 millimeters is very good because that's what the read most of the readings have been obtained. These other readings could be to some degree accurate but obviously they happen less frequently and therefore there is a possibility that there was more of an error in those specific readings. Oh, we, in those areas we've all discussed that could be error of parallax, it could be systematic errors or whatever the case might be. Okay, so essentially we want to look at what's known as probability. You might have come across a probability uh, or the term probability you might have heard it being used in the money market type of um, industry and investments um, of what's the probability that your investment might decrease in value or increase in value. You might have heard it in terms of pass rates, what's the probability of having a good pass rate. And so probability is a value that's between 0 and 1 or it could be a percentage value between 0 and 100%. So let's look at a few examples which will show what is probability. The first example is tossing off a coin. We all have done an experiment 
um, of tossing a coin, you can either get heads or tails. So there's a 50-50% chance of getting heads. And there's a 50% chance of getting tails. And obviously, you could also express it as half or half, as a fraction over here, or as there's a 0 0.5 probability of getting heads, or a 0 0.5 probability of getting tails. So obviously the percentage is just a multiplication of 100 of the value between 0 and 1. Again, this is if the coin is not biased to fall on one side compared to the other side. Okay, let's look at a, another example you might come across and that's in terms of throwing a dice. And um, so What's the chance of getting the numbers 1 to 6 happening? Well, we know that there's a 1 and a 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Those are the different numbers that we can obtain. And essentially, again, in an unbiased um, type of dice, there's a possibility of only happening, or those numbers happening, 1 out of 6. Now there's uh, often when people play with um, die, or refer to as two dice, um, you would often have values that would range from 2 to 12. And now you've got to determine what's the probability of throwing each of these different numbers. So let's have a look at that um, in a little bit more detail. Alright, so. We are able to, um, let's, let's have a look at all the different possibilities. How many different possibilities can you have in throwing a number one? Keep in mind you've got two dice. There's actually zero possibilities. Because with two dice, the smallest numbers are one um, for each, and therefore you need the smallest number you can throw is a two. So essentially a two, or you can get a, a 1 on a 1 dice and you can get another 1 on the other dice. So you can have that combination happening over there. So that implies there's one possibility that we can have over there. But let's have a look at a 3. So you are able to throw a 3 with a 2 die. Now 1 dice could have a 1 and a 2. Now the dice could have a 2 and a 1. There's no other combinations that you can have with those two specific dice. So therefore, you've got two different possibilities over there. Okay, let's have a look at the number 4. Number 4, you can have a 1 and a 3, or a 3 and a 1. You could also have a 2 and a 2. So those are the different possibilities that you'll be able to get a uh, number four or different combinations of, of the two dice. So that gives you three different possibilities. Okay, let's have a look at the number five. Okay, so for five we're able to get one and a four. We're able to get a four and a one. We're able to get a two and a three and a three and a two. We're able to get a. We're able to get any other thing else. If we set a three and a two, we'll come back to that number. And a five is an odd number, so we can't have two even numbers. So therefore, that implies we've got four different possibilities to get a five. Okay, let's have a look at the number six. Okay, so number six, we can have one and a five, five and a one. We could have one that is a two and a four, or the other possibility is having a four and a two thrown together. We could have a three and three thrown together. Any other possibilities we can think of? No. So that implies that there are five possibilities to throw the number six. Okay, let's have a look at 
other numbers that we might come across. What about a seven? Well, seven is possible. Um, let's have a look. We can get a one and six, or a six and a one. We can get, would you be able to throw a two and a five, or a five and a two? We'll be able to throw maybe three and a four, four and a three. Are there any other possibilities you can think of? No, that seems to be correct. So that implies that there is six different possibilities that we can have over there. All right, let's have a look at the number eight. So for eight, we can throw a one and a seven, or seven and a one. Hey, but wait a minute. We can't do our dice don't have seven sides on it. Now, I made this mistake on purpose because this is something that I've seen happen sometimes where people will say, oh, you can throw a one and a seven and they consider it as one possibility. So just be careful of that. All right, so we can throw a two and a six and a six and a two. We can throw a three and a five and a five and a three. We can throw a four and a four. There's no other possibilities to throw eight. So therefore, that implies that there are five different possibilities of throwing an eight with the two six-sided dice. Okay. Let's have, the look, have a look at the number nine. So number nine, let's see, we can take a three and a six, or six and a three. We can have four and a five, or five and a four. We can have any other possibilities that would, if we increase this four to five, that would give us that combination again. So there are four different possibilities to get a number nine. Okay, let's, let's have a look at number 10. So um, number 10 can be either a four and a six, could have a six and a four. We could have what other possibilities are there? We can have a five and a five. And there's no other ones that you can get over there. So that implies for the number ten there are three different possibilities. Let's have a look at the number eleven. Okay, so for number eleven you've got in this case you can get um, five and a six, or six and a five. Are there any other combinations you can think of? No. So that implies that there's two different possibilities to get eleven. Lastly, number twelve. And there's only one possibility to get a twelve, and that's a six and a six. So there's only one possibility that we can get over there. All right. So now that we've looked at all this. And we've looked at all the different um, possibilities of throwing these different numbers. We can then start putting it into a table, these different values. Okay, so let's have a look over here. You'll see that I've got um, the total number of twos. There was a frequency of one, which we calculated over there, which gave us that one over there. To get a three, we've got a frequency of two. And you'll see that these numbers over here correlate with the numbers that we've got over here in this table. Um, just a random one. So, for example, the number 8 over here, we've found there's five different possibilities. So the number 8 over there indicates a five different possibilities. So we just transfer this information into this table. Now, essentially, we want to sort of look at, well, what is the probability that we can have. And essentially what you've got to do is you've got to look at this frequency and add all these numbers together. And if you add 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 plus 5 plus 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1, you get 36. And that becomes our denominator. So in this case, there's 1 over 36 
possibilities to get the number 2. That would be our probability, would be 1 over 36. If you look at the number 6 that was thrown, for example, we found it with five different possibilities. So 5 over 36 would be the probability of getting a 6. Again, if you look at the number 10, we saw there were three different possibilities of throwing a number 10. So that would give us 3 over 36 as our probability of getting a 10. Okay, so um, keep in mind a lot of people would go and automatically say the, six, the, the 36 is equal to 6 times 6 and that's how they would get that value but as you will see later on there are things that you could cause these numbers to change um, so it's better to just calculate it individually something else you need to be aware of if you take all these prob probability values and you add them together you will get a value of 1 so it is um, adding them all together will give you 1 Okay, so now that we've had a look at that, that was looking at a six-sided dice. Let's have consider a possibility as an exercise um, for a four-sided dice. Okay, so in terms of what the dice is going to be looking like, um, yeah, you might have your language critics that might say, a four-sided um, device or, or um, object can be classified as a dice, um, but you understand what we're saying. It's four-sided, so in other words, in this case, it's probably going to appear like a triangular pyramid. It will come down in that way. There might be, if you look at to go through and look at it, it would appear in that way. So. There's, that would be sort of a three-dimensional bit of a bad drawing of what it would look like. So you would have one side that would have the number one, one side that would have the number two, one side that would have the number three, and one side that would have the number four on it. Okay, so having a look at this, you've got two of these four-sided dice. What are the different um, combinations that you can have with these two four-sided dice to, um, and you know what frequency would they happen at um, and what's the probability of getting the different numbers? What's the different numbers that you will be able to obtain? So um, quickly just thinking about it you'll probably be able to get uh, the smallest number you'll be able to get is a 2 because that would be a 1 and a 1 for these two dice the largest number that you'll be able to get is an 8 because that would be 4 on this dice and 4 on the other dice so as an exercise do the same thing as we did in this example um, but for this 4 sided dice 